Hello, this is the lecture on general pharmacology in which we will study the basic uh, principles about the pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. Okay, let's start. Pharmacology is the division of biomedical sciences about the interaction of the drug with the living organism. And this is divided into two big parts, pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. Now let's see what is the difference between them. Pharmacodynamics is the subject that describes the mechanisms used by drugs or other, other small molecules to affect human biology. So uh, how to remember that easily? Pharmacodynamics is what the drug does to the body. What actually, the drug can uh, affect which process it can affect which cells which are biological molecules of our body the drug can affect let's see what does the pharmacodynamics study it studies the action of the drug on the body including receptors interactions uh, dose doses uh, dose response phenomena that means uh, how the dose can affect the response of the body because sometimes some drugs have no effect in small doses but suddenly if you increase the dose suddenly the effect becomes very uh, high and if you increase the dose more effect can change actually so this is also the subject of pharmacodynamics and mechanisms of therapeutic and toxic action of the drugs so here in the scheme you can see that pharmacodynamic uh, studies the effects, the mechanisms, the localization of drug action. Pharmacological effects of the drugs are caused by their interaction with certain biochemical substances. We call these substances the targets. I think everybody knows what is target. Yes, the target if we shoot in that. Uh, so our main um, purpose is to, um, how to say it, to get in that target. So the drug also has its own target in our body. The drug cannot affect all the cells of the human body. Uh, they actually have some biochemical molecules which are suitable for interaction with the drug. So what can they, can they be? They can be receptors. Uh, they can be also ion channels. They can be some enzymes and they can be some special carriers or predominantly these um, things named in this uh, slide are located in the cell membrane you remember yes the um, cell has the membrane which consists of uh, bilipid layer phospholipids yes and also these phospholipids uh, somewhere are interrupted by some uh, protein protein molecules so these protein molecules are very often the receptors which are sensitive or the channels which can carry something or special carriers which are, for example, uh, ATPase. Yes, some protein which can bind one ion on the one side and one ion on the another side, another side, and for example, change them, like bringing some um, necessary molecules in our kidneys. Yes, for example, when we have... Uh, in kidneys when the urine is going to be ex extracted from our body some necessary elements should be brought back so this is what special carriers do they bring some necessary elements to our body or sometimes get rid of them so the opposite process can happen uh, okay Let's talk about cell receptor. This is a macromolecule component of the cell which, uh, with which a drug interacts to produce a response. Usually this is a protein. Uh, ligands, which are actually our natural neurotransmitters, or it can be not natural, chemical, yes, drugs, they attach inside spaces uh, between the coils held by ionic attractions. And after that, reversible, uh, uh, reversible ionic binding of ligand activates receptor by changing the protein structure. 
Intensity of transmembrane signal is determined by percentage of receptors occupied. What does it mean? That means when we have more drug, more concentration of the drug, that means more receptors will be occupied. If more receptors are occupied, so of course the function of this organ will be changed more. If you have less dose, so less receptors, so less effect. Understandable? Okay. Uh, the types of receptors can be different. I will do like that. Um, they are located in the membrane. Those three types of receptors. Ion channel receptor, G-protein coupled receptors, and enzymes. And also not in the membrane of the cell, but inside the cell we have DNA regulating receptors. Let's see what, how do they look like. Ion channeled receptors, they consist of several subunits. You can see them here. You can see that different, oh, sorry. You can see like alpha subunit, gamma subunit, alpha subunit, beta subunit. So these are different uh, protein molecules, but they are bind together. And when binding the substance to, to the extracellular domain of the receptor, ion channels open. So here, in the extracellular domain, you see, like, if this is the mm, membrane, this is inside the cell, this is outside the cell. So somewhere here, the molecule can bind. For example, here it's acetylcholine, or, or it can be any drug. When it binds here, you see what happens. If the channel was closed, it opens. You see in the picture. When the channel opens, of course, the ions can get inside or they can go outside, depends on the channel. So, of course, uh, it results in changes of the permeability of the cell membranes for these different ions. And then it can change the, um, um, how we call it, like potential, potential of this membrane. So, that is how the effect will be. Um, will be made on this cell. The GABA receptor is even more difficult. You see the structure, many, 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 many subunits, but which actually control only the chlorine channel, only the molecule, not molecule, the ion of chlor, chlorine can come inside or go outside. Uh, actually, the GABA receptor uh, is uh, about letting chlorine go inside the cell. Then we also have G protein coupled receptors. You see if in those receptors we had some interaction with the ion, ion uh, coming inside or going outside. So in case of G protein coupled receptors we don't have any ions here. We have like this is a G protein coupled receptor located in the cell. Here can bind a drug outside, yes. And if it binds, the agonist binds, what happens? This G protein can be uncoupled. You see, it is uncoupled. Now it is separate from the receptor itself. And by changing the structure, it activates the secondary messenger molecule. Secondary messenger, it can be uh, one of these molecules like guanylate, um, adenylate cyclase, guanylate cyclase and others and they will uh, change the activity of some biologically active molecules inside the cell. So this will give the, it's not the secondary messenger, this is like the uh, first, first messenger and then it gives the signal to the secondary messenger. This, of course, the signal is not uh, like a neuro signal, it's a biochemical signal. So this will uh, result in changing the biochemical ingredients of the cell, inside the cell. Then enzyme coupled receptors. When binding to the receptor to the substance is activated tyrosine kinase. This is the enzyme which phosphorylase intracellular proteins and thus changes their activity. Uh, actually, in this case, you have even less um, stages of effect. The receptor is directly connected to the protein. So 
it results in the activation of this protein. No more uh, ions, no more different biochemical reactions are included in that. So directly bind here to the receptor and this enzyme will be activated. This is, uh, oh, I'm sorry for Russian, but this is actually how this uh, enzyme coupled uh, proteins, enzyme coupled receptors can affect. Here is the cascade of some biochemical reactions, which is produced by activation of the enzyme tyrosine kinase. And one more, the special group. The special group is DNA regulating receptors. Why they're special? If you remember, I told you that those three were located in the membrane, but DNA is not in the membrane. It is inside the cell, intracellular receptors. That's why here it's written that they are intracellular receptors, which are soluble cytosolic or nuclear proteins. The ligands of intracellular receptors are lipophilic substances, steroid hormones, vitamin A and D. Why? Why lipophilic? because to get uh, inside the cell, they have to go through the li lipids of the membrane. Only lip lipophilic substances can go through the lipids. That's why they come inside and they can bind to these receptors. As a result uh, of the interaction of substances with intracellular receptors, the synthesis of many function functional and active proteins changes. Uh, why? Because they can affect on DNA. And you remember DNA, what is it? DNA is the molecule which uh, holds the genetic information about which proteins can be produced in the cell. So DNA will change and affect on protein synthesis. Uh -huh. Here you can see the scheme, how it happens. The hormone, which is lipophilic, can get through the cell membrane inside the cell. This is inside. Then it binds to cytoplasmic receptor, which brings the drug to the nucleus. This is nucleus. And in the nucleus, it binds with nuclear receptor, which activates the transcription of DNA. And DNA then already will transcribe the information for protein synthesis. Protein synthesis. So this is the effect of our intracellular hormones or drugs. Okay, what is it? Affinity. Affinity, this is a very important word. Affinity, this is a propensity of the drug to bind with the receptor, which can be more or less. For example, epinephrine has an affinity to all adrenal receptors. Uh, you know uh, that this is actually um, how, like in biochemistry, you already studied that, that not all molecules can attach to all the proteins. Some of them have special uh, structure, like which can see, be suitable for each other. If they suit each other, then it means they have affinity. Substances that have uh, affinity also may have intrinsic activity. intrinsic activity. This is the ability of the substance to stimulate the receptor and those, effect, uh, and those cause certain effects. And depending on the presence of this intrinsic activity, drugs can be divided into agonists and antagonists. Now let's discuss what is it, agonists and antagonists. So like, firstly, again, re re um, revise. Firstly, the drug should bind with the target. For this, it should have special affinity. The structure should be suitable. And only secondly, it can stimulate or not stimulate this receptor. But firstly, it should bind. And then if it stimulates, this can be agonist. If it doesn't, it can be antagonist. And sometimes we call them agonist antagonist, both. So what is it, agonism and antagonism. Agonists, they facilitate receptor response. Facilitate, so make stronger, yes? Antagonists inhibit receptor response. So they block, they stop it, reduce. How it can be? 
let's see this is our receptor yes the door which should be opened and we have some hormone or neurotransmitter which is our mm, natural natural uh, agonist of this receptor so this key can open the door easily yes so it uh, can be a good way to have the uh, effect then we have a drug drug that can be agonist agonist that means facilitate receptor response we remember yes so if you use agonist for opening the door what will be click hop okay the door is open so effect is uh, good effect is produced so our receptor made the good effect but also we can have antagonist antagonist which can be suitable so you can put it inside this lock i can put it but i cannot open the door and also if i want to use the key my natural hormone or neurotransmitter it already cannot work why because here antagonist has occupied the lock so it cannot already open you understand that the key cannot be used so our natural hormone cannot be used for opening this door so what does it mean this direct agonist and antagonist can directly effect on the same receptor on which the hormone or neurotransmitter effect that means if they have the same target this means they are direct and now which agonists can be agonists or they are also mimetics they are substances which affinity which have uh, affinity and intrinsic activity when interacting with specific receptors they stimulate them and cause changes in the conformation of the receptors resulting in chain of biochemical reactions and develop certain pharmacological effects they can be also full agonists or partial agonists full that means that effect will be the same as natural as natural neurotransmitter does and partial it means effect will be but not that big it can be less or not all the types of receptors should be activated so only part part of the effect will happen what about antagonists now antagonists they are substances with affinity so they can bind yes but deprived of intrinsic activity so they do not stimulate they only bind to receptors and by this inhibit the action of endogenous agonists like like it inhibits the effect of the key yes it's like a stick which can break the lock of the door so therefore they are also called receptor blockers pharmacological effects of antagonists are associated with the elimination or reduction of the action of endogenous agonists so we can sometimes stop the effect of our endogenous substances Antagonists can be also competitive and non-competitive. This depends on where do they bind. If they bind in the same site with uh, indigenous agonists, they are competitive because they have a competition for this lock. When we have one lock and we put the uh, stick and the key in one um, in the one hole of this lock, so they have competition. Who will be the first? They compete. This is competitive antagonism. And non competitive, it means like um, I have one hole in the lock, but also I have something, I don't know, uh, on the side of the door, which can also block the lock. So finally, the key will not work here because on the other side, the stick has already blocked this lock. Mm -hmm.